again, uh, I'm not going to let this go because to me, that uh, I forgot, I was going to look up, uh, I got so involved, the Spirit of God moved it like that. Remember, God told us prophetically, allow me to break out. So there's this time we just let God, we let God be God and let Him break out. Mm -hmm. And lives are being changed in that manner. But I, there's a, I was reading in pre service prayer, and the Bible said they believe the scripture, comma, and the words that Jesus spoke to them. So I believe that God spoke to us this last Friday night in a very powerful way. I believe He was sending us a message. And I believe one of the best things to do whenever God says something to us, that we hear what the Spirit is saying and then complete alignment. Yes. That God would give us a word, and in that word there would be an assignment. And then He looks for who who will come into a alignment with assignment. For instance, let me let me just say this so that we we don't uh, misinterpret something. When when God gave us a word that we've been in one big revival to this city. Yes. But don't don't think. Uh, first of all, well, let me say it this way. How I want to say this that. See, basically, anybody that's saved had been given the power to become. Yes. Mm -hmm. So don't think that God calls, God just says to one, one person or one church, I want to bring, I want you to bring revival to the city. Anybody that's saved, yes. anybody got the baptism of the Holy Spirit yes. has been given power to become, yes. and you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit of God shall come upon you. The question is not, the, does God want us to do it? The question, are we willing? That's it. That's it. Okay, so when God gives us a word, then He's going to stand back. So what, uh, what I, what I cannot do is hear what God's saying, a word with an assignment, yeah. and then go back to business as usual. Yeah. Say amen, and, uh, but yes. not really do. <clears throat> so that's why what happened last Friday night when the Spirit of God, and let me just say, I noticed tonight after the song service, you tiptoed real quiet down the steps. Because <laughs> <No. laughs> last Friday night you were sitting there and you went down as a normal human being, yeah. and then you 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 realize you're missing something. Yeah. Tonight when you went down the steps, you tiptoed real quietly. Yeah. You didn't walk. You tiptoed yeah. real quietly, listening. <laughs> That's great. I love it. I love it. I love you. I love to be with you all. She tiptoes quietly. Yeah. Yeah. They There was no beller than tongues. They got down there. He didn't want to. He didn't want to miss. See, that's what's happening. Is that? That. That's When when the spirit of God, after the song service. She gets up to make the announcements last Friday night, and this she got about three or four steps of, in the Spirit of God. She got slain in the Spirit. I know Pastor Jane, she, uh, it's not a, a super spiritual religious spirit. I mean, she got slain in the Spirit. I was about four steps down, and I heard the travail. I heard the clunk, and then I heard the travail, and I came back up. You never even, you didn't even get past so <laughs> it, it, it was so powerful and yeah. then I come up and I have to be standing by her when yeah. when she was travailing in the spirit it was a different tongue the spirit of God was roaring through yeah. her tongue it was travail wailing agonizing groans that cannot be uttered then it went into prophecy and the prophecy was the baby has been birthed okay so so before saying the seed seed had been planted. The, the church, the ministry had conceived. Then there's gestation. Something going on inside yes. that you can't see for a while. Yes. Amen? Yes. Something being developed inside. So when prophetically, then when there was so what God said to us, the manifestation. Yeah. Okay, so then what we don't want to do is hear what God said then go back to business as usual. So that's why it's so important that you heard and you're here and coming to alignment with assignment. Okay, so that's uh, I played that breakup song. We're going to break up with things that are keeping yes. us from fullness. And, that's, that's and uh, what happened tonight then 
when she went down upon the floor, it basically is my message. And I'll just give you my title to, tonight. My title is Feeling What God Feels. Amen. Yes. Feeling What God Feels. You become so <coughs> one with God. Now, a few times the Holy Spirit brought this to me today. That, uh, see, here's what, what some of you are experiencing. And, and if you don't understand it, it can bring confusion to you. How many of you kind of, you felt like you're a normal human being, and then something happens, then the, the Spirit of God moves in you, the next thing you know, you had this, you had this anointing, you had this great anointing of joy. You are so happy, then the next thing you know, you might be normal, and then the next thing you know, you're weeping. Yeah. You're weeping because the conditions of someone that you see, family members, the church, the local church, the city, the nation, planet Earth, and then you go back to joy, then you go back to weeping, and if you don't understand th that how the Spirit of God you feel when you begin to feel, when you begin to get the heart of God, yeah. when 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 His His thoughts are higher than our thoughts, we begin to become so one with God. So let me do just a little bit of review here, and don't turn to these up uh, because uh, you could you could turn to Nehemiah chapter one if you want to. In Genesis chapter 32, remember Jacob, Jacob was left alone. Jacob was alone. There'll be, a, there'll be alone seasons. Okay, There'll be a time you feel alone. And, and everybody has to go through that season of aloneness to learn that you're never alone. Amen. Yeah. That you can contend with God and begin to wrestle. Jacob was left alone and he wrestled. How long did he wrestle? Until. Until. Okay, until. Okay, so then, what what happened last Friday night, then we had to wrestle. How long do we need to wrestle? Until. Until. And okay, the breaking of the day. In Hosea chapter 10, verse 12, he said, it, it's to, uh, break up your fellow ground, unused time. Anything, anything that's hindering, anything that once was used of God and now not being used of God, break up, break up your fellow ground, unused time, or time that we're wasting on things, that we could, that is uh, the reason, break up your foul ground, because it is time to seek God. How long? Until. It's time to seek God. Until the rain Now, when, when we become lukewarm, or religious, or become seduced by churchianity, we'll come and hear what we could have, say amen, and then go home without ever developing it, or pursuing it, or, or bringing growth. And what has happened, we have fainted and we have become comfortable becoming spectators. Yes. Rather than entering into what God really has for us. So when you when we have to want uh, in this what God is doing, we have to want we have to want God, we want to see God until He come yes. until He come and reign yes. righteousness. righteousness. Now see we have to want if someone's comfortable with churchianity, it doesn't want revival. Because yeah. if, if, if revival breaks out, their thought will be, will church services get any longer? Yeah. Will they expect yeah. me to come to church more often? Oh, Lord. <laughs> so you had to yeah, want, you had to want, to come out of the desert, we must want the water garden. That's true. Okay? If you want the freedom, you have to be willing to leave the land of bondage. Wow. And that's the deception. People making choices, they're losing, and they tell themselves, they lie to themselves, they use self-deception, I'm winning. No, they're God is the flesh, things yes. of the flesh. So you have to want. Oh, cool. Now, if someone doesn't, if someone doesn't really want fullness of God for themselves, <coughs> They're not going to seek it for other people. If they don't want it for themselves or their own family, if they don't want it for their mate, if they don't want it for their own children, they're certainly not going to seek for it for other nations. Oh, yes. Or not, yes. I'm I got one amen. Seriously. In other words, to, to, to move from where we are to full, we have, we have to understand we're not going to pretend there's no problems. I've never been into that. Okay, Matthew 6, uh, 6, 33 says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and then all these things will be added to us. Okay, what we don't want to do 
wow. and, and dead, phony, churchianity people come and hear what they could have, say amen, and they go home and never develop it, and they go pursue all these things, if there's any time or energy left over, um, any time, energy, money left over, throw $5 in the offering, never pay tithes, and they want to That's critique right. and tell everybody else what to do. Okay, so they're basically seeking first the kingdom of God and yes. His righteousness, and then all these things we add to it. So yes. many people yes. change that around. Awesome. They, they, they want all these things to be added to them, and then they put God way down the totem pole. On the priority, Paul. Okay, so if we if you if you want what God has, then we got to seek Him first, yes. and not give Him the leftovers. Amen. Amen. Here's what I felt like. I never heard this before. I've said it in a different way. This is what I felt like the Holy Spirit said to me. There's a there's a lot of people. There's a lot of people that that really they don't want to marry Jesus. It's true. Because they want to date around. Yeah, yeah. That's true. That's true. Many other lovers of things. Yeah. Many other lovers. Right. Okay. I've had uh, I've had uh, people tell me I I don't ever want to get married because I I don't want to get bound down to one person. Yeah. I want to sleep around. <laughs> See, a lot of people don't really want to really don't want to surrender to Jesus. That Jesus be loaded to my talk at the church service. But they really don't get married. They don't want to die to self and become married to him. Because they still have the gods. So they want to date around rather than die to self and, and, and get married to Jesus. Okay, Hebrews eleven six, don't turn to it, just write it down. Without faith it's impossible to please him. For if he he that cometh to God, not just church, okay, we there are people that come to church and, and learn how to ignore the God of the church because if you seek Him, you find Him. Yeah. And if you find Him, He'll deal with everybody's stuff. Amen. All, everything, okay? Amen. Okay, so without faith, it's impossible to please God for He that cometh to God must believe that God is and that He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. Not tolerate a church service every now and then when there's nothing else to do. we got to seek God Draw nigh to God, He'll yes, draw nigh to you. Yeah. Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all these things will be added, and it's right, and all these things will be added to you. Oh, okay, I'm going to I'll, I'll share one more thing uh, before I get to Nehemiah, because I'm not going to go very long in Nehemiah. That's why I'm, I'm leaving it open for Sunday morning. I'll, I'll say more. In Ezra chapter 1, uh, when uh, I'll just do this a little bit by review. In verse 3, he said, Who is there among you, among his people? As God be with him, let him go to Jerusalem, that's in Judea, and build the house of God, of, of the house of the Lord God of Israel, which is in Jerusalem. Okay, there's a voice crying to them, there's a call. So they're, they're in Babylon, uh, judgment, chastisement. They're in Babylon, type of the world, and there's a call. Everybody, everybody wants to go, can go. And what's waiting for them is hard work, Opposition and it will cost them greatly. Yes. And only uh, just yes. a little bit fewer than 50,000, now two or three million, uh, were willing to go. Okay, so the, what, the one real high attendance right there was there. Right. Okay? Oh, no. They were not willing, but that's that's the importance of Remnant. It's a beautiful picture of Remnant. When oh, no, no, no. Zerubbabel goes back at first, remember chapters 1 through 6 in Ezra is about uh, Zerubbabel going back to rebuild the temple. Ezra's calling was to rebuild the spiritual condition of the people, and Nehemiah is to rebuild the wall. We'll talk about that in just a little bit. Okay, let's go to, uh, I want to, let me just pick up one or two other things in uh, Ezra before we go on. In Ezra, Ezra chapter 7 and verse 10, Ezra had prepared his heart to seek, Ezra had prepared his heart to seek the principles of God and to do them to teach in Israel statutes and judgment. All right, let's go to Nehemiah chapter 1, and we're going to begin there. And uh, again, what God has been doing he, prophetically, Pastor Jane had no idea what I was preaching on tonight. She had no idea my title or my message, but the Spirit of God did. Mm -hmm. yes, yes. And God illustrated exactly because... Uh, now, those of you that have heard me preach Nehemiah before, I've, I've done this before, but 
as I begin to study this today, the Spirit of God just led me to do this a totally different way. So I have very peace. I'm just going to, I'm not going to go very far tonight. And that will leave it open for Sunday morning and uh, either Wednesday or next Friday to, to continue this. Okay, Nehemiah chapter 1 and verse 1. The words of Nehemiah, the son of whoever, came to pass in the, in the month of Chisel, which is maybe December, and he was in Shushan, the, the palace, that and I, one of my brethren, came. So he comes back. Uh, uh, Nehemiah is still in Babylon. And one comes back from uh, Jerusalem, the and I, one of my brethren, came in, the certain men of Judah. And I asked him concerning the Jews that had escaped, that had left of the captivity concerning Jerusalem. Now, 13 years have passed. Okay, since so Ezra uh, went. Okay, so Zerubbabel went first to rebuild the temple. And then Ezra goes. 13 years. Very important you understand this point right here. And, but, and also, I want to I say another thing. that As I begin to study this day, and, and I, I looked up different uh, sources, and... Uh, uh, Bible scholars are kind of confused because they say different years. And so uh, I've stopped. Uh, I'm gonna, I, I do believe in those 13 years, but some of the other th different ones, I mean, they, the, and the mileage, from the mileage from Babylon to Jerusalem, some of them, uh, they say it very differently. So uh, if anybody disagrees with the number, I, I may too. <laughs> because different Bible scholars, when you read different things, and I love to, to read different what different people say about something, and then uh, what I I try to be led by the Spirit. What is the Spirit of God leading me? What's the inward witness? What what the, I feel like the Holy Spirit is telling me? And so, uh, don't get hung up upon the dates or the miles or how many years. Don't get hung up upon that because uh, believe me, Bible scholars are are confused about that themselves. Okay, so 13 years have gone by. So, uh, Nehemiah asked, he says, that, uh, what, are the, what I asked them concerning the Jews that escaped that are left in the captivity concerning Jerusalem. And they said to me, the remnant, the remnant that are left of the captivity there in the province are in great affliction and reproach. Great affliction and reproach. Now, uh, I, I'm just trying to discern how the Holy Spirit will want me to do this. Okay, just, uh, I'm going to turn to uh, Exodus chapter 3. Great affliction and reproach. Now, that's why my title tonight is Feeling What God Feels. What if, what if someone could care less about other people being afflicted? See, then they're not going to be willing to take the journey. They're not going to be willing to hear, to respond to the call of God. They're not willing to do the great work. They're not willing to overcome the opposition. They're not willing to pay the great cost. Okay, so that's why I titled it, uh, Feeling What God Feels. Now, here's the whole point. What does God feel about what's going on? Amen. What does God feel about them that are, that are in affliction? Yes. And uh, I wanted to... I wanted to, to give a cross reference. I love cross, cross references to enlarge upon something. In Exodus chapter 3. In Exodus chapter 3, now remember that, that they're in great affliction, and the word affliction there in the Hebrew means they're, they are, they're greatly hurt, they're vexed, they're in trouble, they are in adversity. Uh, a whole lot is coming. And reproach means they are, are in disgrace, they are in shame, they are rebuked. They, they are being upbraided. Okay, so here's, a, t here's to me is a real cheap gospel. A very cheap gospel. It's so cheap, inexpensive to say, well, if you had faith. Right. Well, they could have said, uh, that could have been said about you and I when we were lost. Yeah, that's true. That's true. And no one contend for us in prayer. Yeah. No one witness to us. No one reach out to us. Okay, so when we, when you become, and that's what some of you are experiencing, you're becoming so one with God, you're beginning to feel what God is feeling. That's what happened last Friday night. That's what happened tonight. She began to feel, holy men of God's spirit that were moved by the Holy Spirit. Whenever we come, if I could come in here, 
and, and have a telephone pulling on me, no response. I'm not, I'm not being moved at all. Something wrong with me. Something very wrong. With what's in our nation right now, if I'm not being moved, I need to get right. Okay, when you, when you begin to come in contact with God, every, your life will be changed. And what we don't want to do is learn how to tolerate the church service and never meet with God such a way that they're going to change. That's why I compliment this little angel that during the song service, she danced with her two children. She got, she got them in her hand, they're dancing together. And uh, I just love that. It's just, I thought that was so powerful. Yeah. Now I'm going to get a... So Nehemiah here, he wants to know, how is it? How is it in Jerusalem? Okay, because Zerubbabel went back, Ezra went back, and he's... He's very good. Now remember, Nehemiah's name means covered. He's a type yes. of the Holy Spirit. When you, when you see that, you understand that. He, he's a builder. The Holy Spirit is a builder. Amen. He wants to rebuild. Know you know that you are the temple. Okay, so there's a whole lot going on here. And I mean, I want to I lay this foundation. And, and uh, what, what, what God did through the saints of God here tonight is exactly my message tonight. So I want to get a cross-reference here. Uh, in Exodus chapter 3 and verse 7. Now remember, where Nehemiah, he asked, and, and the, he said, the remnant, the remnant, the remnant that are left in the captivity there in the province are in, they're in great affliction and reproach. In, in Exodus chapter 3, verse 7, the Lord said to Moses, Surely, I have surely seen the affliction. That is so beautiful. I've seen the affliction. And here, That's and uh, so this awesome. this Hebrew yes. word means I've seen the depression, oh. the misery, and the brow beating. That is so I awesome. see he will see anyone that depressed. Yes, yeah, so beautiful. I see it. Yes, and I see works. the misery. Yes. Now see what, what be careful, be careful. Go, go. Um, let me put it this way. I was a single Christian man for quite a while. And I can remember the first, I remember extremely clearly being in the pulpit speaking and my eyes falling upon a young lady by the name of Jane. I remember the first time my eyes fell upon her and I'm speaking and I'm going. She had this great big smile and she re she's receiving the word like a hungry little baby bird in the nest saying to the mama robin, drop the worm in my mouth. I'm hungry. And made an impression upon me. So I began, began to talk to her. And I began to talk to her longer. Begin to spend time with her. I began to spend more time with her. Come on, say to God. I began to really I began to develop a relationship with her. Come on, say it. See, if you begin to spend time, if you you find God, yes. if you see God, you find Him. Yes. You start spending time with God, yes, all oh. kind of things will happen over a long period of time. Yes. God, you begin, you begin to. She, uh, she and I, a lot of time we don't even need to say anything. We know. Right. So we spend so much time together, and we go on. We go on the date, we, and I might take her home one or two o'clock in the morning, and then I go to my apartment. I call her up. <laughs> we talked at 3 or 4 o'clock in the morning. So then I realized, okay, I don't want to just date. I don't want to date anyone else. I don't want to date around. Amen. For sure. Amen. 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 Yes. And so I found the one. Amen. And asked her to marry me. And thankfully she married me. Now we, now the two became one. Yes. Come on, Saint. Yes. See, what we don't want to do is kids come and hear what we could have. Yes. Never did really. Come to the house and tolerate the church service. Come to the house of God, tolerate the church service, but never develop a relationship with the God of the house that we, we know Him. When you begin to know Him, you begin to know how He thinks. You begin to know uh, that His thoughts are higher than our thoughts, and His ways are higher than our way. And then do, what happens is, when we begin to get emptied out of self and everything, uh, uh, everything that's wrong, and then he comes into those areas. Then you start becoming so one with him, you begin to think like him, you begin to feel like him, you begin to see like him. Come on, say to God, you will see, you'll begin to hear, you begin to feel. Prophets here, the prophets, 
prophetic people, they see, they hear, they feel, or any combination of the above. Uh, and so you begin to feel, that's why she felt, she felt God's heart. So God says, I have surely seen the affliction of my people that are in Egypt. Egypt speaks of the world, represents bondage. And I have heard, I have heard their cry. I've heard them cry. They're in depression. They're miserable. Yes. I, I have seen their brow beating. Oh. I've seen. I've heard the affliction of my people in Egypt. I've heard their cry by reason of their taskmaster. The word taskmaster means the, those that are pressing them. They are tyrannizing them. That's to drive them like a workman. I'm telling you. Uh, alcohol, drugs, immorality, pornography, gambling will drive you. Yes. yes. Come on, yes. Sister, make a slave out of you, make you in the bondage, yes. and God says, I've heard the cry. Amen. Oh, and verse 8, he says, I've come down to deliver them out. Amen. I've come down to deliver them out of the hands of the Egyptians, oh. to bring them up and out. Yes. I've come down to bring them up and out. We believe in Lord. Yes. That's what you got to believe now. Amen. Amen. Well, I've come down to bring them up and to bring them out. Yes. Of the land into a good land, and to a larger to a land flowing with milk and honey, now they're in starvation. See, uh, people, people living in starvation, and God wants to bring them out to to where they'll be well fed. He wants to bring people out of poverty and in prosperity. Yeah. Yes. When Pastor Brian said this uh, a few services ago, when he when he was preaching, he, and he gave that illustration. You see someone, what, and then you know, uh, one year, five years, ten years. 15 years, even 20 years later, you see them again, they got the same issue, the same bondage, the same sin, the same poverty, the same attitude, the same whatever, fill in the blank. 20 years later, same issue. Okay, Why? Because they, they're hurt, but they never came into alignment. So we have to, God says, oh, well, I've come down to bring them up and to bring them out and to a land full of milk and honey. You have to be willing to leave Egypt. And what but God has in the land full of milk and honey. Not hear about the land of milk and honey. You've got to leave the spiritual place that you are. Oh, yes. Amen? Amen, Lord. To a land full of milk and honey, to the place of the Canaanites. We know about all the ites. Oh, yes. Now, verse 9 Now, therefore, behold, the cry of the children of Israel has come before me, and I have seen the oppression. Now, verse 10. Now, remember, remember there in, in Ezra, when we shared in Ezra. Who among you is willing to go? There's the call. There's the call of God to to leave. Are, are you willing to take that journey? Are you willing? Are you willing to leave the ground of being a new convert, or under chastisement, or whatever place that God finds you? Are you willing to leave that ground for more? Yes. Amen. Are you willing? Oh, who among you is willing to leave that place, the land of idolatry, to come back to the house of bread and build? Yes. Mm. Amen. Same thing right here. Yes. In verse 10, come now therefore and I will send you to Pharaoh. Come now therefore and I will send you. Now what I'm telling you is that when the people right now, they're hearing this and they're, they are responding. They're saying yes. They're saying yes, I'll do that. I'll go on the journey from barrenness of fruitfulness, from wherever I am to what to where God you're taking me. Spiritually, don't think geographically. It's a picture of, of growth. So that we want to we want to how many want to grow in prayer? Yes. How many want to grow in love? Yes. How many grow in error and grow in faith? Yes. Yes. Fill in the link. Okay? Alright, let's go back to Nehemiah chapter one. Okay, we got the, we got the we got to get to the place that we feel what God feels. Okay, so again, in verse 3 there, he finds out they're in great affliction, they are in reproach, they're, they're, they're being shamed, they're being rebuked, they're being upbraided. Oh boy. The wall of Jerusalem is broken down. The wall of Jerusalem is broken down, and the gates thereof are, are burned with fire. Now, to yes. illustrate that, turn to Job chapter 1. Keep your finger there in Nehemiah 1. And I think it would be advantageous. I was just going to speak this out of my spirit, but I'm going to go ahead and uh, and and uh, read a couple of scriptures here in, in Job chapter one and verse eight because I I felt like when I read this, uh, I felt like the spirit of God really ministered to me. In Job chapter one and verse eight, now. 
Well, let me, let me see. Verse 6, um, I'll move faster. Now there was a day when the Son of God came to present himself before the Lord. Satan came along also with him. And the Lord said to Satan, uh, Whence cometh thou? And Satan answered the Lord and said, For going to and fro on the earth and walking up and down, see, seek you whom he may devour. Why does Satan come? But to steal, to kill, to destroy. He's not your friend. Okay? Verse 8, And the Lord said to Satan, God said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job? So Satan is seeking who he may steal, kill, devour. Who he, may, he wants to destroy. Who can I, who I, who can I bring destruction? Who can I cause to fall? How can I take someone's health and make them sick? How can I take someone's freedom and make them uh, into bondage? I'm looking for someone. And God says to the devil, Have you considered Job? Now, what I will say right now to me is extremely important. I believe that Job represents the church. I believe yes. the remnant. Have you, have you considered my church? I'm going to have a people. Amen. I'm going to have a people. Amen. I'll say yes. more about that in yes. just a little bit, okay? Just remember, my, this is my opinion. You don't have to believe like I believe. In my opinion, Job represents the church. Have you considered Have you considered my body? The body of Christ. And we're going to see where the devil thinks he's winning. But you're going to see that the, the devil is going to think he's scheming, not God. Oh, yes, he does. <laughs> and God's really going to take advantage of the devil. Amen. Okay? Amen. The devil here going to, the devil is going to be convinced he's winning. Yeah. But in reality, he's losing. Wow. And we'll see them here, okay? So God said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job? Oh, wow. So there'll be a time that God will say, Have you considered River Dry Eyes? <laughs> Have you considered rubber come out? Have you, have you considered the barefoot properties? <laughs> if uh, if rubber come out washes his car and it rains, is going is it become a is it going to become a serial killer? A mass murderer? <laughs> yeah. And you consider my servant Job. God is saying to the devil. There's none like him upon the earth. He's perfect, which means in the Hebrew, he's undefiled, he's upright, he's complete, he has integrity. Amen. He is an upright man, which means he's a righteous man. Yeah. Righteous yeah. means that he's in right standing with God. Right standing. Yes, Jesus. Wow. Now, let me just ask a very loaded question. Can God trust me and you in trouble? <laughs> Can God trust you and I with trouble? Will our faith ever be tested? Job here is going to go through something, and God does not explain one dot or tittle to Job. Can God trust me with trouble? Can God trust you with trouble? Our faith will be tested. Okay? It's one thing to shout a man, amen. That's another thing. See, there's something beyond feeling and emotion and yes. called faith and yes. obedience. Yes. That's true. Mm -hmm. To yes. me, obedience is the highest form of worship. Yes, yes. yes. It's the highest yes. form of worship. Yes. We can sing, we can praise, we can shout, we can dance, but if I'm not living it, God doesn't even accept my praise and worship. I mean, no matter how loud I am, He doesn't accept it. It's true. He That's said, true, oh, yeah. this, man's, this man's praise and worship is in vain because he, uh, he, he worshiped me in vain because his heart not right towards me. That's true, yeah. Okay, so God says to the devil, have you considered Job? There's none like him upon there, the perfect and upright man, one that fears God, and he yeshueth evil, which means he would decline it. Amen. Put it before him. Now, let me just, let me just say this. He put sardines in front of me, and I'll decline them. Amen. <laughs> I will assure them. <laughs> the word you should be will he'll turn it off. He will decline. He will withdraw from evil. Then Satan answered the Lord and said, uh, Job has a reason for serving you. The natural mind cannot comprehend the things of the spirit. Yes. We're getting to the nitty gritty of this, and this, this is not my message. This is just, this is a good appetizer. <laughs> the devil says to God, Job is serving you for a reason. Oh, the, and God's saying, I got you right where I want you to be. Yes. I got you exactly. That's exactly. 
The devil thinks he's setting up God and Job for failure. Yes. And yes. God is going to make a message throughout all of eternity. Amen. Yeah. Amen. The devil Amen. saying, Job has a reason for serving you. Ain't going to name it. Amen. Job says there's a reason God. Uh, Job's not serving God for no reason. He has a reason for fearing you. You made a hedge around him. You have made a hedge around him, which means a fence for protection. Very important you understand that. There is a hedge of protection, and you're going to see the devil said, I tried to get to him, I couldn't. A hedge. Now, to understand Nehemiah and his calling. Nehemiah's calling is to go back to Jerusalem and rebuild the wall, which is the hedge. Amen. Come on, say, it's to rebuild the wall. See, what testimony is, and let's, let's just say, and, and, the, and I'll, I'll, I'll say more about that a little bit. Nehemiah is calling going to be to be real that wall. You can tell, uh, a lot of people don't want to mess with America because they know about the military. Yes. They know about the Army, the Navy, the Marines, the Air Force. They don't want to mess with America yeah. or Israel yeah. because of their military power. Yes. So let's just say America's military, a metal of this, a little white picket fence around the whole state. Nation. <laughs> well, let's just say a little white picket fence around Jerusalem. The fence is a representative of the spiritual condition of the people within the city. Mm -hmm. Nehemiah's calling is a rebuild the wall, the hedge of protection. Yes. Amen. Yes. 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 Thank you, Jesus. There's a place in God. Thank you, Holy Jesus. Yes, Holy Jesus. Since can God trust me with trouble? Yes, Holy Jesus. Now remember, the walls are knocked down. You are my protection. The gates have been burned. Yes. In other words, in front of us, put it this way: Satan has legal access. So someone come to church, still mixer, sure, but when they walk out, the hedge, the hedge has not been rebuilt around them. So Satan still has access. Wow. So hell could care less if some people come to church. It's true. Wow. Their demons you cast out of here waiting for them outside. Right. Yes. Yeah. I don't Sound know. doctor? Yeah, I don't <laughs> So Nehemiah has a calling. That's why I'm gonna take time. I'm gonna take my time with it. I'm, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go very far at all tonight. I'm gonna save time It'll be Sunday and Sunday and or Wednesday and or Friday. I'm just gonna take time with this. Okay, so Satan says to God, Job has a reason for serving you. Right. Number one, you got you have a hedge of protection around him. And about his yes. house. Yes. You got a hedge, a fence for protection around him and around his house, and about all that he has on every side. Mm -hmm. Now, how did he know that? Because he tried to yeah. Come on, saints of God. See, there's a place in God. There's a place in God. Help them want you to enter into fullness because there's your place of fullness. Amen? I, I'm, I'll define this in, in just a little bit. I'm going to, when I get through this with the Job, I'm, uh, I'm going to define some things that go really help people understand. You've made a hedge around him about his house and a pump all that he has on every side. Now listen to what he said. You have blessed the work of his hands. And his substance is increased in the land. You've got him protected. He's, he's rich. He's wealthy. He has all these things. Uh, his house, he's protected. His house is protected. Amen. He's blessed. Yes, yes. yes. Amen. The natural mind can't comprehend things of the spirit. No. Satan is saying to God, the only reason, the only reason Job is serving you is because of what you've done for him. Yes. So then the devil says in verse 11, put forth your hand now, touch all the head, he'll curse you. Yes. Now, what was the theme of the prophecies tonight? A four letter word. Love. 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 See, yeah, here's what Satan can understand. Satan cannot understand that Job is serving God, not because what God has given him, but because Job is serving God, because he loved God. When you love him, you begin to love. You begin to think. You begin to love other people because you're so full of love. You're so full of God. You're so full of love. And it's so easy to love. Yes. Yes. And when you see hurting, afflicted people, yes. you'll yes. feel God's thought, yes. God's yes. mind. You will begin to feel God's heart. Oh, 
Yes. And you no longer will have a stoic devil, and you no longer have a telephone anointing. You begin to feel what God feels. Yes. Well, we don't want to come to church for 60 years and never feel nothing. That's true, yes. Amen? Yes. Come on, say. Okay, let me, I'll, I'll say this again. I, I, the Spirit of God gave me this uh, revelation that within the last week. I had the lead blower and I was blowing all the leaves off the patio. And the Spirit of God said to me, alcohol and drugs are, and immorality is Satan counterfeit for the anointing in the presence of God. Because I, I, I knew, now maybe, well, Maybe one or two people know what I'm talking about. I knew how to absorb some liquor and feel something. Oh yeah. I'm not the only one. I knew how to smoke certain things, drink certain things, snort certain things, take certain pills, and I would feel something. But when I found God, I found love. I found the same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead. And that delivered me from all that the world had. Because this is better than that. But if you don't get this... There's a warning. You you know that you know that by the preaching. When people tell you church is boring, no 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 no, yeah. church. When you ignore to pray and sing and praise it, oh. when you come to the house of God yeah. and ignore the God, it's supposed to be boring. Yeah. If you go to the movie and you ignore the movie, it's supposed to be boring. Yes. Yes. If you go out to the date, you ignore the person that you are on the date with. For your cell phone, it's boring. supposed to be born for the person. Yeah. Come on, say to God. <laughs> warning, warning, yeah. warning. But the fruits from people tell you, church is boring. <laughs> what they're saying to you, I have learned how to come to the house of God, tolerating church service. I'm ignoring him. It's supposed to be boring. Yeah. The main thing to keep the main thing the main thing. And the main thing is God. Yes. That's what Satan can't understand about Job. Yes. Satan's convinced the only reason you gave me money. I, I can't you got a hedge around him. He, you're blessing him. He got every he's but you blessing everything he does, everywhere he goes. He's blessed, he blessed, he blessed, he blessed. Yes. The only reason Job was serving you is because what you do for him. God said, Well, I got you exactly where I want. Yeah. I'm gonna yeah. use you. To demonstrate something through all of eternity. Amen. No job. Yes. My church will serve me. Yes. Not because of what I do for them. Yes. It's because yes. they love me. Yes. Why do people yes. pray? Because they want, yes. they want yes. to talk to God who is yes. love. Yes. And why do they sing? Yes. They're yes. singing yes. because they're a great brother. Yes. And they're yes. 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 They can't yes. shut up. Yes. Yes. Because they thank yes. God. They're so grateful. So thankful. They, they from the God of the church that has a relationship with the God of the church. Yeah. Come on, yeah. why do we worship? Yeah. Because God is seeking yeah. that they will yeah. worship Him. Worship Him. Glory, glory. Yeah. Yes, we you will have, worship you, you Jesus. Say, Mark, you don't have to worry about that because I can I can move left or right. Okay, oh. <laughs> you just go ahead. <laughs> What's a police? I don't, don't hit, but I can move. See? <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> if you're staying between me and the camera, then I, I just move. I can move. Okay. I want you. I want you to feel free to respond. Okay. That's it's important. Okay? It's important. Yeah. Okay, so you know, you know, you know the story about all that that happened. There's the great big point that, that I want to make. See, here's what God was saying. God was saying to Job, "I can trust you with trouble. You're going to serve God because you love Him. Yes. Sunshine, rainy day, cold day, hot day, in between day, storm day, blizzard day. You're going to serve God." Some days are difficult and there's no difference. I'm going to serve God because I love. Because God is love. And, and love, God's love is so much better than yes. lust. Yes. Amen. All right, now, let's get back to, to Nehemiah. Now, he says here, again, in, in verse... Three, the wall of Jerusalem is broken down, and the gates thereof are burned with fire. So let's just, let's just say, okay, now, here's these people. So these people come back to rebuild the temple. 
Okay, so they're called, they're going to rebuild the temple. And so, uh, God wants to rebuild the temple. Uh, he's going to rebuild the walls. He's going to rebuild the city. And his long-term goal is to rebuild the people that will live within the walls, okay? That's within right. within the city. That That's what he wants to do. But let's just say now, remember now, you have to understand, uh, I'm going to define for you a little bit, the, the wall around Jerusalem is basically a type of the military. It's a protection. Mm -hmm. And uh, so if there's no wall, so then, so some people come and live there, but there's no wall of protection, then the enemies can come and mock them and make fun of them and persecute them. Yeah. So what Satan does not want anybody to do, to get in this place of provision with a hedge, yeah. Amen. the wall was totally built, not only the wall, but the gates, yes. the gates, that's where they yeah. go in and go out. Yeah. And the elders were at the gates yeah. to discern the watchmen yeah. were at the gate to discern what comes in, what goes out. We're going to the servant comes in, what goes out? Yeah, Who's yeah. in my life? Who? Yes, Lord. Yes. 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 That's right. Yes. 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 All right, now I want let me let me define some things. Now, we've talked about the three waves of people. Zerubbabel goes back to rebuild the temple. Uh, they rebuilt the altar first, and then the foundation that that begin they begin to restore the the feast. Which uh, yes. I'll say more about. Okay, so they 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 built the altar, they restored the feast and the sacrifices. The feast and the sacrifices represent communion. Amen. Offer of the sacrifice of praise, praise. sacrifice of righteousness, the Amen. sacrifice of praise. Amen. Why are some people bored to God's house? They don't even sing. They don't open up their mouth. Yes. They don't praise. They don't worship. And say church is boring. No church is not boring. No, it's not. It's not boring. <laughs> say so, so. Now you have to understand to to understand scripture. Pray, sing, praise, worship. To not do that is rebellion. Yes, yes. Lord. Yes. And rebellion is as a sin of. That's why they're bored. Yes, that's yes. true. That's why they're barren. Yes. Come on, say to God. Yes. It's that simple. It is. Sing, praise, worship, yes, pray. Right. Yes, um, and not and to be God's house and ignore the God, not even open up the mouth, it's yes. rebellion. It's yes. unbelief. Yes, and they yes. will not enter in because of oh, unbelief. Yes. That's why it so touched me for her to bring her children in. Yes. Amen. They became one. Yes. Yes. That touched me. That, 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 I believe that touched the heart of God. Amen. Okay, so let me, I want to explain just a few things. Uh, uh, the key aspects of, of, the, of the, the wall, the work, okay, the wall, the and the warfare. The wall speaks, here's what the, here's what the wall speaks of. When, and this is what hell does not want to happen in your life. Because what it speaks of when they get this wall rebuilt around Jerusalem is their defense. Amen. Okay, very important we understand this. That when, when the temple's rebuilt, they rebuild the altar... They, uh, they restore the, the feast and the sacrifice, which speaks of communion with God. Yeah. They were forbidden in, in Babylon to do that. So now they got back upon the turf that God had for them. Amen. They're in God's land. So now they can have communion with God. They're offering up sacrifices. There's been multiple times this has happened to me. I'll come in here, and, and I don't feel lively. I don't feel... Yeah. Well, but I, I just don't feel right. quickened. Right. So I've learned to put my flesh into subjection. Yeah. I began to go round and round, and I came so alive, I felt the river just boil up yeah. within me. Yeah. So there's certain things we got to stir up to get yeah. the devil there. Amen. We got to put up the garment pray for the spirit of happiness. Amen. So Amen. that's the same. Someone, someone comes in dead. You don't want to come to church for a whole church service and remain dead. You yes. may come in feeling dead, but you begin to pray, oh, sing, oh, praise, yes. worship, begin yes. the days before God, yes. and you'll come alive. Amen. So they know what God yes. says to do. It's supposed to be boring. Yes. Come on, it's unbelief. It's rebellion. Yes. It's disobedience. Yes. It's hearing what God hearing what God tells me to do. No, I'm not going to do it. I'll do what I want to do. Yeah, how well they're working. Right. It's not. It's not. It's not. It doesn't work well. Okay, so it speaks of defense. The wall speaks of defense. Now, look right here just a minute. When the wall gets rebuilt, 
when everything gets restored, when it speaks of a separation, yes. everything, everything within that wall, within that city, within the temple, yes. and the church that God had for them, everything in here had been consecrated to God. Amen. Yes. Yes. It speaks of separation, those out there, they're yes. on the other side. Yes. Come on, say, but that which had been consecrated to God, God's people, yeah. where are they? They're in the hedge of yeah. God. They're in the hedge of protection. Yeah. They're in the presence yeah. of God. Yes. Yeah. It also speaks of testimony. Okay, let's just say Nehemiah goes in and his calling is to rebuild the wall. So he bring he goes to Home Depot and gets a white picket fence. Is that going to keep ISIS out? No. Okay. No. The height of the wall, the thickness of the wall, represent the, how big or how little, and the condition of the city and the temple really represents what it really speaks of the spiritual condition of the people that live there. Yes, Lord. So what is the spiritual condition of Kansas City? What is the spiritual condition of our nation? And if if people can come to the house of God and hear what they can have, oh God, uh, raise the dead, heal the sick, cast out devils, sign wonders, miracles, can follow you. Um, how long it going to last, guys? Yes, I got to get back. I got to make some more money. I've got to get back my electronic devices. I got to get back to my sports. How long it going to last? Yeah. I'm bored. I'm not. Amen. I'm not either. <laughs> See, when you begin to feel what God feels, when you begin to think like Him, you'll be where she was tonight. You'll be where she was last Friday night. What's wrong with How come I'm not down there yet? Amen. Amen. Yes. Come on, saints of God. Yeah. See, it, uh, David Wilkerson preached a message on anguish. Yes. Anguish. I think, I think about everybody's listening to that about 25 times. <laughs> the anguish. See, when you begin to feel with everything, there are people, there are people within our own family that's wiped out. Yes. And if I got a nasty attitude towards them, how am I going to care about people in other nations? Yeah. That's true, yes. Come on, seriously. <laughs> I got to stop lying to myself. <laughs> Someone died, go to hell. Someone died, go to hell, and we're not concerned. Well, if they had faith, and kiss a dog, and love a dog, spend time with a dog, and not even no time in God prayer. Yeah. I didn't realize they're going to be wow. preaching this one. <laughs> <laughs> Children don't have a health insurance, but the dog does. <laughs> the wall speaks of covenant. Covenant being restored, being restored. The the wall being rebuilt speaks of safety, security. Come on in here. You won't have the problems you had out there. That's true. <clears throat> come out of Babylon and come back here but between you had to come back and, and see this ground that's now foul in destruction yeah. and what's waiting for you number one there's a big long journey number number one you gotta, you gotta break up with your foreign lovers you got out there yeah. you gotta be willing to take this long journey and then what's waiting for you is a whole bunch of work Yes. And then when you begin to get in position, there's going to be conflict. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Yes, that's so true. Oh, yes. And what's waiting for you is it's going to be great. This will happen only at great cost. Better than yes. Yeah. So that's why... Um, that's true. That message is not real popular. Now, if you said... Oh, you can drink, drug, fornicate, lie, cheat, steal all that you want, and you're still going to heaven. You can have the devil, Jesus, bow, it's a life from hell. Yeah. You can have a crowd. Jesus had the multitude, but the closer he got to Gethsemane, the crowds went down. Yeah. Way down. I'll give you an illustration. Whoa. <laughs> All right. 
How long did Noah preach? And how many, see, like I've heard that somewhere before. I don't know where, but he, he spoke for a while, didn't he? How many converts did he have? Now, fill that in the blade for me. Noah was a preacher of righteousness. Now, if he said free food, free money, uh, and for everything, you can have the devil, you can have the world, have Jesus too. He'd have the crowd. Yeah. Yeah. He'd have to be. He'd still be building ships. Yeah. 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 Come on, saints of God. Yeah. But since he was a preacher of righteousness, oh, that's too costly. Yeah. I have to deal with my stuff. I don't mind telling my mate and my children and my my mom, and Paul. I don't mind telling other people. But when you start dealing with me, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. That's the word. So then we 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 learn in church, hanging around other church people. We learn religious language. They put me in the condemnation. No, sweetheart, that's conviction. Yes, that's a good thing. Yes. To cooperate with God and to re return to, if you want fullness, that will bring us into the land. There'll be a great work, great conflict. There'll be a great cost. Leadership, rendered people, you and I got to see. Yes, Number one, don't lie to yourself. Yes. Yeah. You got to see. We got to see how things really are. Yes. Okay. yes. Me, I'll say a couple. Amen. Yeah. A couple things. We have to see how things really are. Think yeah. of how many, what, 62 million babies have been aborted mm -hmm. in America? No, we're not talking about now. Horrible. We're not talking about in our nation or in our city. We're not talking about lust. We're not just talking about premarital sex. No. We're not just talking about fornication. Uh, we're, we're not just talking about now about adultery. We're talking about uh, again yes. sexual addiction. Yes. We're talking about homosexuality. Yes. We're talking about lesbianism. And now, if, as, if that wasn't enough, now they're having. Uh, they're having operations to change. Well, uh, a man say, "Well, I'm I'm a woman," and they have operation to change their sex. And uh, we have to understand that under uh, right right now in our nation, Satan is trying to destroy the whole family concept. Yeah. No more man, no more husband and wife and children. He wants to destroy the whole family concept yeah. that the. Uh, the feminists are now saying they're on, on planet Earth. There should only be ten percent men. The rest should be 90 percent women. Going on right under that. God's looking down. God's looking down. And what, what we don't want to do is hear what we could have. That you want? Are are you willing? Are we willing? Are we willing to leave the ground that we're on and go to rebuild the temple? So people that have a, a place to come. When the White House was decorated up in, in rainbow, the homosexual colors, president of our nation had the White House in homosexual colors. They're trying to redefine marriage. Man with a man, woman with a woman. Hollywood has had become a conduit of perversion. They say they say there needs to be separation between church and state. What that what that really means? What a founding fathers meant that someone like ISIS can't come to America and say you need to worship who we say to worship, and if you don't, we're going to persecute you, and if you don't respond to the persecution, we're going to kill you. We'll take your money. We'll take your wife. We'll rape your wife. We'll kill your children. We'll make slaves out of your children, and we'll kill you. That's what it means. That's what. So when they say uh, separation of church and state. Uh, I can walk through any capital, I can walk anywhere, in through any school, and I can pray. That's right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Amen. I may not hear me, but I can pray. Oh, yes. But they, see, that's, that's what the church, what, what the founding fathers had in mind, that no one can tell you who and what you're supposed to worship, or when, or where. Amen. And, yes. and so you can, so and we need freedom, freedom of religion. Amen. Okay? So then the, they didn't want prayer in school, so now they got school shooting. So, and now uh, they rise up. Of uh, New Age and Santeria, uh, witchcraft, cults, gangs. Climate control is really about government and wanting to control everything. 
journalism is nothing but propaganda, pro-liberal, yes. pro-homosexual propaganda. Yeah. The rise of feminism, feminism that's, just a, that's just a few of the, of the things that, see, that we have to see. We can't stick our head to say and pretend there's nothing wrong. Yes, so then, uh, who among us is willing to get in position and build a place where God could come, where, where God could be, and people could come and get saved, get healed, get delivered, get restored? Amen. We're gonna, if, if I don't care what people think, I don't care what they say, we're going to speak in tongues because God said in His Word, forgive, forbid not to speak in tongues. Amen. Said earnestly desire to prophesy. We're going to do those things because it's biblical. Someone, someone might say, without offense, without offense, me that you don't that you don't want it. <laughs> you don't want that between you and God, but you're not going to stop us from prophesying. No. Seriously. See if there's anything else I need. Okay, yeah. Uh, we need to see how things really are. Yes. And then we really need. That's why so far we know God's word. We need to know. When, when covenant is restored, we need to know when you're right with God how things could be. Amen. Scripturally, so we have to yeah. see, we got to admit, don't stick your head and say there's no problem. There's problem. That's not yes. a negative yes. confession. There are sin in America. Our yes. nation is sick. Yes. Just because one person or a family or a church or uh, a certain movement is getting a lot of victory, our nation has lost ground. Yes. Yes. That's the point. And planet Earth has lost ground. Yes. Okay, there are people, there are individuals, there are churches, there are, there are certain movements that experience great, great, uh, great move of God. Uh, we, we, I believe God wants to just enlarge it by a million folk. Yes. Okay. Amen. All right, so we got to see how things really are, and we need to know, very important that we know then by the Word, how they could be scripturally. Yes. The, the Scriptures is the pattern. It's yes. truth, okay? Yes. Yes. Now, after we see how things really are, yes. mm -hmm. and then we know how the, how they could be, yes. then we have to be willing to recognize our own position. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Am I in prayerlessness? What? Am I too busy to pray? Am I too busy to read the Word? Am I too busy for the house of God? Have I allowed things to come in? Am I dedicated? Can I, can I make it? Uh, am, I, am I doing all these things, but I'm, I'm leading God out? What is it? Seeking first the kingdom of God? And it's right to do, then all these things shall be added to you. Oh. Mm -hmm. Yes, Lord. Jacob was alone, he was left alone, and he wrestled until the breaking of the day. Until so we got to believe that God has spoken, and so that we don't we're not gonna uh we will not believe what we see with our eyes, what we hear, or what we feel, we're gonna believe what God has said. Yes, and yes. Here, that's the key. They believe the scripture and the words that Jesus yes, spoke to yes, them. Right. We got to yes, read it when God right. speaks. We got number one, you have to have the discernment. Right. What's that really God? That's right. That's and then right. if it's really God, what, what will how what will my response be to what God has said? Yes. No response is a response. Mm -hmm. And people have become comfortable hearing what they could have, and there's no response oh. and convict their way. They're, who's who can fool God? Nobody. Nobody. <laughs> You're going to see Lord. where this is going that this was illustrated tonight. Let me just uh, <clears throat> after Wednesday night service, what God did last Friday and Sunday, after when, uh, what is today? Today's Friday, yeah. After Wednesday night service, I woke up Thursday morning with the spirit of prayer. By that I mean the spirit of God was boiling. Just boil. I woke up Thursday morning boiling. I had to pray. I had one of the most beautiful, what a wonderful, beautiful day. And I ran my errands and I talked in tongues the whole time. I had the music just blasting away. God, God and I. When, when you have such a relationship with God, you know you're never alone. Amen. Amen. In fact, the more, the better your relationship with God, the fewer time you need to spend with people. That's true. Yeah, you, know, you never feel alone. You know, you don't ever get depressed. Okay? Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, there's a, there's a, believe me, I, I, I'm really into corporate worship and witnessing and all that. Okay, so, 
There is great affliction and reproach, and the wall of Jerusalem is broken down, and the gates thereof are burned with fire. There's the condition. There's the situation. Okay, so I, I think that what, what God is doing, He's allowing people to see. Eyes are being opened. And I want to I want to say this again because there's people right here in, in this body that you're you are you are so feeling different things at different times. You are so elated with joy. You have such joy, and within 30 seconds, of the spirit of weeping, and you change so fast. And you and, and see what what we're doing. God is ex extremely emotional. God made oh, yes. Jesus wept. Yeah. Yes. Jesus wept. Okay, so he went, and so that's what's happening. That you're you're getting so in the spirit realm that the things of the flesh are 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 so dissipated. You have been so cleansed and so purged and brought to such a place of sanctification that your heart, your heart is becoming so one with God. Your mind is becoming so one with God. You're, you're becoming one spirit with Him. And it's not none of us are claiming to be perfect. But there's, we still have to fight a few thoughts off that poor little parakeet every now and then. Oh, yeah. But we, well, but we, we there's, there's no little graves and no longer around your house. Okay, so all the, when, when we have to really acknowledge how things really are. And we have to, we have to know by God's word how things could and should be. We have to be willing to recognize our own position. The next thing, very important, and, and that this is the beginning of Ezra, go all the way back to Moses, and you see it here in Nehemiah, okay? What changes am I willing to make to become part of the answer? Because if I become part of the answer, it's going to take energy, time, energy, and money. Now, yes. you don't buy the gifts, I'm not saying that, but you may you may need to, you. Uh, for instance, I would never take a job that would take me out of church. Amen, yeah. Money was not my issue. And uh, let me say this, that you've heard me say, I'd rather, I, uh, I'd rather lose a few dollars than lose time. Yes. Yes. So there was someone in our, in our fellowship that, uh, that a, uh, a landlord took them for some money. But rather than spending all the time and energy and money fighting them. Yeah. Yes. 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 <laughs> valued her time more than yes. power struggling. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Come on, Saints. Yes. Amen. Very when I was real young and I was a ball player, I would never, 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 I would never, I would never miss a ball game. So it was always the job eight to four thirty or nine to five, whatever. Never was I going to miss a ball game. Then when I became real a uh, party animal, somebody said, "Oh, <clears throat> we got a great second shift job. Not mine. Not mine." So we got nights and weekends. No, that's not me. That's not for me. So when I got saved, I practiced the same thing. When I was real young, I'm never going to miss a ball game. I played ball, but I never played. I never played ball when the church was open. No. <laughs> oh Lord. I go down to the I go to the employment office, and they had this thing called microfish, and it would say this microfish. It said, "Okay, now here's here's where you work. Here's the hours. Here's the days. Here's the pay." And it'd be a high paying job, uh, but you got to work second shift and and weekends. Mm, no, wouldn't even consider it. I'm going to find something. It wasn't about how much money. It was about the schedule. Amen. It was about seeking you first the kingdom of God. Yes. Mm -hmm. See, he that's faithful in little. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. It's faithful much. Yes. Okay, so that's when I got saved. And God gave me that job. Daytime job. And uh, yes. I'll, I'll say that. <clears throat> I had this daytime job and I was driving this van. Uh, for the Star Supply Company, uh, daytime job, and I would listen to radio preachers all day long. And there was this, there was this every man that came in to this company I worked for, and uh, he did the janitor work. 
So then the man just disappeared. No one sweeped the floor, no one cleaned the bathrooms. So I, I told the owner, I said, uh, I'll clean the bathrooms and I'll, 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 uh, I'll sweep the floors in between, my, in between my rides. He was shocked. So then, come payday, he calls me in the office, he gives me a great big raise. Praise God. I didn't do it for a raise. So I got, I got, you can take me on. I'm going to tell you the female vessels were so happy I was willing to clean the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we was great. Yes. Many oh, people Lord. that are called to this type of ministry had done some janitor work. That's true. Yeah. And I'm ashamed of it. Many. Yeah. Come on, saints of God. Mm -hmm. Jesus, That's true. <clears throat> now, the main thing is to keep the main thing the main thing. And what we, what we, our main thing is our relationship with God, that, we, that we, we hear what the Spirit is saying so that we can come into line. We must know what God's saying, what He's doing, mm -hmm. so that we won't let get left behind. God has been speaking. <clears throat> God has really been speaking. That's why I said what I did before we begin recording. Yes. It's not until we're free enough and responsible we've got to keep prophesying to the dry bones. Yes. Okay? Yes. There has to be an awakening. I'm not fully awake, but I'm not snoring. Yes. <laughs> Come on, saints. Remember what we said. We've said this for some time. We won this breakthrough. We didn't care who God used to break it. And this, I, I believe that this breakthrough came last Friday night. This word came, and that's why every message, that's why every message right now is to come into alignment, to position the church. You know what I'm doing? All I'm doing is pastoring what God's saying. I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to hog the Pope, and I'm not trying to be the only one that's speaking. I'm just saying right now, I need to pastor what God is saying, what God's doing, so that we, plural, remember in Acts, they became one. So when God, when God says something, uh, you know, the way I illustrate this, remember in uh, Acts chapter 9, when uh, when God dealt with Saul to make him Paul the Apostle, and he was blinded, and and uh, God tells Saul, go arise and go to Damascus. What if he did go to Damascus? See, that was a test for this highly educated, wealthy man of great influence, mm -hmm. God was dealing with him, you're going to, I'm blinding you so that you have to put your hand in the hand of someone else who can see. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's, That's why they're seers in the body of Christ. That's why Satan is warned yes. to kill prophets. Now when we get into this, okay, when we get into this, I want you to really stop and think what they're trying to do to Donald Trump. Oh, yes. Okay. That's true, yeah. Mm -hmm. Modern day Jeremiah. Yeah. Yes. Come on, saints. Yeah. I'll say more about that another time. Now, to get into this, this is why if I would have preached Nehemiah like I normally preach Nehemiah, I would have been long past first three. Mm -hmm. What God dealt with me today had no idea what God was going to do before I got in the pulpit. Mm -hmm. See, that's why I was a prophetic word that was given. And I got I pray it very, very often, probably four or five times a week, if not more. And it, and the, one of the prophets said, God said, allow me to break out. Yes. <clears throat> now, that doesn't mean we're just going to come together and just prophesy uh, over one another the whole time. Or just, cast, no, we're going to, we're going to. We're gonna we're gonna pray. We're gonna sing. We're gonna praise. We're gonna worship. We're gonna prophesy. We're gonna preach the word. We're gonna respond to God. Amen. 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 Now you're gonna really begin to see. And uh, all God wants us to do that we, we that we would become one heart, one mind, one spirit with God, <coughs> and understand what He's saying, what He wants to do, where He's attempting, where He's leading us and guiding us so that we can come to alignment. 
so we would be one with God, and that's where that's where the hedge is within the will of God. When yeah. when He leads you, okay, that's where the hedge is. That's where the protection is. He says, I "Do A B C." In the early years, I would say, "God, let me tell you why X Y Z is better than A B C." Yes, Lord. It wasn't working. No. Yes. So it wasn't a few days, a few weeks, or a few months, a few oh, years boy. go by, and I realize it's not working. Yeah. You know, yeah, maybe right. your God, you saying do ABC is a little higher. Mm -hmm. Okay, so finally we'll get past oh, verse right. 3 and verse 4. It came to pass when I heard. It came to pass when I heard these words. See, what happened tonight? What happened last Friday night? Pastor Jan heard God's words. Number one, God knocked her down. Wasn't a religious spirit. Wasn't a super spiritual. Wasn't a performing spirit. Wasn't a showmanship. God knocked her down. She got up to make the announcement there was a great big clump. And then travail came out. And then prophecy came out. The baby has been birthed. Okay, so everything from then is to come into alignment. That's Amen. why I said again, I'm not going to repeat what I said before we started recording. That's why we got to keep prophesying to the dry bones. Okay, came the past when I heard these words. What happened to her tonight? She heard God's words. What happened to this little angel over here got prophesied to? She heard. Those that were prophesying heard God's words. And when those words were heard by the, by the messenger and were given to the person, there was a response. Yeah. You ever prophesied to someone that was like prophesying to a telephone pole? No response. Yeah. And the devil tried to convince you you missed it. You didn't miss it. No. Came the past when I heard these words. That's now, the key. religion, dead phony religion, is about hearing and critiquing the speaker, the message. Oh, that that was fair. Oh, that was that was pretty good. I'd give that message a good grade. Oh, that was really good. Oh man, that was horrible. I was so bored. Oh, that was one of the best messages ever. We have learned to critique everything rather than allow God to critique us. When you hear His words, yes, when you hear what God's saying to you, mm. Hebrews five eleven says, "See that you are dull." Of hearing. Anybody beside me ever been no uh, of hearing? Yes. yes. But see, after being dull of hearing for a while, <laughs> I realize it's not working. You have to see where you really are. Yes. You got to see how things really are. Why am I so dry? I've not been drinking. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Why do I feel so dead? I've not been reading the, I've not been eating the bread of life. Yeah. How come I'm not on fire? I've been wasting time. When I, it came to pass when I heard these words, I sat down. And I wept and I mourned. What happened to Pastor Jane tonight? I wept and mourned. I uh I worship God this afternoon. I worship God by bringing the big green trash thing and going through and emptying out the little. I worship God. That's true. That's worship, yeah. And I noticed two of the little buckets were so full of Kleenex. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're not going to mention any names. One was so full of Kleenex. <laughs> and the second place, we're not going to mention any names. We don't want anyone to know. <laughs> 
you know, I've said this before, I'm going to say this again. When I first got saved and I, and I found out there was a teen challenge center, they asked me to move in, become assistant dean of men, we go out street witnessing, and we were invited out just every week in a three-state area. I couldn't preach, I couldn't teach, I couldn't prophesy, but I could weep over the people. I could weep over the people. Then years go by and I could preach, I could teach, I could prophesy, but I stopped crying. I stopped weeping. And then gang around that lost ground. See, what we have to be careful is not come to a place we educate our head. <coughs> there has to be an anointing. Anointing. Let me let me put this another way. In this, um, I hear God is not looking for employees. He's looking for sons and daughters. Amen. Amen. Yes. Yes. He's not looking for experts. He's looking for passion for worshipers. Yes. He's not looking for theologians. He's looking for people with an anointing. See, there's not a mental ascending to teaching, but a heart love, a heart burden, mm -hmm. a heart being by compassion. Yeah. Now, what I'm telling you, anytime our heart becomes dry and callous, hard, we can get back to having yeah, a soft heart. So that's, so that's the ground we, we have to change. We, that we have to recognize, we have to recognize why has the word dried up? Why have I, why is the spirit of prayer dissipated? So we have to be willing to recognize That's true. and not be the one that wants to teach on prayer while not praying ourselves. Okay, see, so he hears these words, he sat down and he wept. And the reason he sat down wasn't laziness, it was it's like he had no strength in, in the place. It, it, so, it so affected him. When I heard these words, I sat down and I wept and I mourned certain days. Now, I want to share something out of uh, Isaiah chapter 66. Keep your finger there. And I also shared this recently. But I want to do this again. I know that Time may be getting away from us here a little bit. Not everyone may not be able to stay to the end, but see, if that's if we love the moving and the spirit. It just takes time. So I'm just going to go to a certain place and then we'll stop and I'll finish this Sunday morning. We'll finish it. I'll, I'll add more Sunday and then maybe Wednesday and or Friday. Okay, in Isaiah chapter 66, this is real important. Um, verse five: Hear ye the word of the Lord that. Hear ye the word of the Lord, ye that tremble at his word. Your brother that hated you, that cast you out for my name's sake, and said, Let the Lord be glorified, but he shall appear to your joy, and they shall be ashamed. Look at verse 7. And, and this says in the backwards, uh, it says, Before she travailed, she brought forth. Before her pain came, she was delivered of a child. Whoever heard such thing. Well, it doesn't happen the way. No. In other words, the baby doesn't come before the travail. That's true. Travail comes, and then the baby is birthed. Yes. Mm -hmm. And in Galatians says, "I Paul said, I, I labor over you, I travail over you, I pray over you until Christ be formed in you. Yeah. So the baby uh -huh. being birthed, that has to be nurtured, and has to be well taken care of. you got to be provided for and protected. Yeah. And you've heard me say this, when I was raised out in the country, uh, uh, I was on uh, one of my classmates and he lived up on a farm and I saw these little bitty baby chicks and I go, oh, I'm going to go play with these little baby chicks and the mama, mama hen said, no, you're not and the mama hen flogged me and I remember that hen flogging me to this day I don't want a mama hen to be more concerned about baby chicks than we are the anointing that's what some people don't understand when they come here we are very protective of the anointing I believe one of our, one of the strongest things here, I believe that one of my main focuses, and some people don't understand this, is the corporate anointing. We want to take the atmosphere. 
It's not just coming in, ignoring God, tolerating the church, that we're calling ourselves a Christian. No, we want to get so in the presence yes. of God we forget about that out there. Amen. That our life is changed. Yeah. And it's presence, not a church. And it's presence is full of joy. Yes. So this is a corporate anointing. That's one of the things that many people don't understand about this place. And that we're really about the corporate anointing that we want to take the atmosphere. And and they became one. And anybody that come and does come in agreement is hindering the corporate anointing. So we want to bring everybody in. That's why when she brought the, her little children in, that, that's why it so touched me. Because what it's saying is the baby doesn't come before the travail. said, who ever heard such a thing? Who ever ever seen such a thing? Shall the earth be made to bring forth in one day? Shall a nation be born at once? But as soon as Zion travailed, Amen. she brought forth her children. Hasn't there been, hasn't there been seeking? Hasn't there been prayer? Hasn't there been wailing, travailing? Hasn't there been agonizing? Yes. And God said, now the baby has been birthed. Yes. Now, what am I? What are you? What are we going to do with that? See, what we can't do is go back to business as usual. No, we no. will grieve Holy Spirit. the yes. Holy Spirit. That is resisting the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. That is quenching. Yes. That is aborting. Yes, my God. Mm -hmm. That is aborting. Yeah. And come to the church and abort the oh, baby God right. his birth while putting people down for abortion. Yes. Wow. See. Yeah. Think about it. Wow. So that, see, any time, and remember now, they entered oh, not in because of unbelief. Uh, uh, Hebrews 4, 1 and 2 says, the word preached did not profit them. That heard it. That heard it. It did not profit them. They heard it. They didn't believe it. Yeah. So they heard it, but they didn't believe it. So they didn't profit them. You're going to see people come to the house of God and there's no profit. They're dull of hearing, spirit of slumber, and they think that's that's what a Christian is. But there's been travailing. There has been prayer. Okay, so that's what. So tomorrow we're going to have prayer at three thirty. Yes. They're going to be uh, prayer. Let me go just a little bit further. <clears throat> okay, so then again the verse and Nehemiah one four. It came to pass when I heard these words, I sat down, I wept, I mourned certain days, and I fasted. Today is day 12 of this fast. And I feel like I and maybe one or two of you will probably go further than 21 days. Yeah. And that's in between you. And I told you, don't even start the fast unless you feel led. <laughs> but I feel like this is really serious. God has said something, and I believe God is responding to the prayer and the intercession that has gone forth. I believe God has got it. We, we responded to the call. Yes. We cried out to God. Now God is responding to us by speaking to us. That's now we need to respond back to God. No That's response God. is a response. So he weeps. He mourns, which means bewail to lament certain days, fasted and prayed before the Lord God of heaven. Wow. And he said, I beseech thee, O Lord God of heaven, great and awesome God, that keep covenant and mercy with them that love and observe your commandments. Let now thy ear be attentive, thy eyes, thy eyes be open, that you would hear the prayer of thy servant, which I pray before thee now, day and night, for the children of Israel and thy, thy servants, and confess the sins of the children of Israel, which we, not them, we, yes. he's identified with the nation's sin. Okay, so, you know, there, there's a good hour, hour and a half of preaching just on that fact that confessing of the people's sins, stand the gap for them. And, and uh, that's what we're going to do tomorrow, and that's what we've been doing for a while, and we're going to continue to do it. Uh, Ezekiel 22, 30 says, I saw for a man among them that should make up the hedge, stand in the gap before me for the land that I should not destroy, but I found none. With everything that's going on in our nation, it's like we're right in the middle of a teeter totter. I believe that God wants to bring one of the greatest revivals ever been upon the face of the earth. Mm -hmm. Satan is trying to yes, destroy. Yes. The spirit, the witchcraft, and the antichrist is trying to take over America. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, and That's true. I'm not going to, when, when I get further in this message, Sunday morning, and we'll probably go beyond that, you're going to say, I'll get into that more, but I don't want to go there tonight, don't have the time. So he says, uh, he's confessing the sins of the nation. <coughs> 
It says in verse 7, We have dealt very corruptly against thee, and have not kept your statutes, nor your, your commandments, nor the judgment which thou commanded thy servant Moses. Now turn, if you would, please, with me to Jeremiah 23. Okay, the airport's in sight. I believe one of the reasons, I don't believe there's many reasons, but one of the reasons that hinders a lot of people to come to church, when you really begin to see God, you begin to find Him, and you begin to realize, man, this is really serious. This is really serious, time-consuming. There's really a great work. And then you begin to stick your toe in the water and you begin to experience great opposition. Great opposition. Great conflict. And it ends up being of great cost. That's why many people begin to hear a voice. Ah, I believe God tells me to go over here to church. Right. They tell me God loves me over there. They don't tell me about going and building. I got my, me and my four, everybody else can go to hell. I don't want to put it that way. Right, yes, Lord. Jeremiah chapter 23. You've heard me say this a few times. You, uh, this has been demonstrated through Pastor Jan two Friday nights in a row. In verse 9, Jeremiah says, My heart within me is broken because of the prophets. All my bones are shaking. I'm like a drunken man. I'm like a man whom wine has overcome because of the Lord, because of the words of His holiness. Now look right here just a minute. That uh, some of you are, are experiencing that. That was demonstrated with Pastor Jane tonight. That when you see, you begin to feel God's heart. How can someone choose hell over heaven? How can someone choose sickness over hell and convince her winning? How can someone choose demons over the Holy Spirit? How can someone choose the devil over Jesus? How come someone can choose a liar over the truth? Jeremiah said because of the prophets, not only the false prophets, Jeremiah says, I can't even I can't even walk plain. I'm like a drunken man that's drank too much wine. I'm so under the influence of the Spirit of God. How can this be? You know what he's saying? He's and, and we're gonna we we'll get into this Sunday morning or, or maybe after that. When Nehemiah comes and he sees all the wall knocked down, the destruction of the city, he says to the people, You see the distress that we are in. You see the distress. Um, that's not the most popular message. No. Because when people see and recognize, discern, and they acknowledge how things really are, how bad things are in our nation, there are, there are churches that are experiencing a move of God in, in that individual, in that pastor, in families, and in that church, there's great victory. But at the same time, the nation the city, the nation, planet Earth has lost great ground. Great ground. Yes. Kids, that's what that's what's happening. That is what's happening, and that's why I brought this message on a Friday night. The Spirit of God changed me. I was going to bring this a whole different way. That what is happening, and that's what we do in a little bit. By 4 a.m., I'm going to put a stop. That we will be, you know, that we can respond to this for those who've got the time and energy to stay. There's that soaking, there's that drinking, there's that absorbing. The very life. Do you realize last Friday night, you all were prophesying and wailing and traveling or one another two o'clock, till just about two o'clock in the morning? That was amazing. What is happening? And that's I, I believe that God is looking at her heart. I saw for a man among them a sin again for the land. 
that I should not destroy and I couldn't find any. Let's don't let that be the problem today. God is speaking the word, but who among you is willing? Who among you is willing to leave Babylon for hard work, take a journey, great conflict, and it will cost you greatly, and it's for God and other people, not for yourself. Real hard, real hard, difficult for selfish people to go on way with God. Real hard for selfish people. Yes, praise God. Okay, so I, I shared verse 9 there. He's, he's stumbling. He's walking like a drunk person. You saw Pastor Jane go down on the floor last Friday. You saw Pastor Jane go down the floor. I'm going like, what is wrong? Man, I got to pray. I got to get it right. Yes, I do. Verse 10. Why? Why, why is this affecting him so powerfully? See, what has happened, Jeremiah does not, does not have a telephone pole anointing. No stoic devil. He's being moved with compassion. He's acknowledging and recognizing how things really are. And he knows how they could, should be, by the scriptures. He's seeing his condition, he's seeing his position, and he's preaching, and they're mocking him. He's given their answers for their problems, and they don't want to hear it. <clears throat> Let me ask you a couple, two questions. How many converts did Noah have? How many converts did Jeremiah have? you got to understand, Raymond. That's true. But that day will come. Yes. The day will come. And that's why to me, this is just, I, I just feel like for me, I'm beginning to understand the different waves. It's a Ruba Bell, yes. Amen. Petra, yes. Nehemiah. Amen. Yes. Praise God. Let me put it another way. Generation after generation mm -hmm. after generation. Yes. One mm -hmm. minister after another, one prophet after another. Amen. You go, how long will we prophesy? Until. Until. <laughs> How long are we going to speak to the dry bones? Until. It's time. They'll come alive. It's time to seek God until He come and rain righteousness. Break up your fallow. See, don't don't apply that to someone out there. Amen. Yes, Jesus. That's true, and that's for us. Amen. Time for me to break up my break fellow ground. Amen. Amen. Yes. Help me, Show me Jesus. fellow ground. Yes, Jesus. I'm being challenged. Yes. Yes. Break now here's what he's saying. This is what we. This is what we. We have to be willing to acknowledge. You can't even. You can't even turn on regular TV. It's mild pornography. Oh yeah. That's true. Now here's what he's saying. Verse 10. For the land is full of adulterers. The land is full. Not one or two, oh, not three or four. The land's full of them. Yeah. The land is full of adulterers. For because of the swearing of the land mourneth, the pleasant places of the wilderness are dried up, and their course is evil, and their force is not right, for both prophet and priest are profane. Oh, my God. Now, if the pulpit's not right, how are the people going to be right? Mm -hmm. Both prophet and priest are profane. Yea, in my house, God said, I found wickedness, saith the Lord. God. Where did he find it? In his in house. Okay. Yes. So if wickedness is in the pulpit, if woke, woke in the, wickedness in his house, wouldn't it be in the home? Yes. Wouldn't it be in the city? Yes. Wouldn't it be in the nation? Yes. yes. Now remember his condition. He's stumbling like a drunk man. He's That's... The picture is given. Why? Because all these things, the prophet and the priest are both profane. Verse uh, 13, I have seen the folly in the prophets of Samaria. They prophesied in Baal. Oh boy. How many, how many oh uh, prophets of Baal, false prophets, whacked out crazy people, giving crazy words, and people following them? Why, yes. why are they giving false words? Because God. people are unwise enough and discerning enough to believe them. Yes, yes. You grow enough, you you will not be fooled. Amen. You grow enough, you you will discern. Mm -hmm. 
we get a we get a good grade, not a hundred percent, but we get a real good grade in here, very good grade. It's horrible, oh my God. Okay, so he says you have to be willing to acknowledge until you understand why different denomination organizations and churches have stopped the gifts of the Holy Spirit because there were whacked out crazy people prophesying, and and there were people in the pew that discerned it, and maybe the pastor or the elders didn't. So they were controlling people. So that's why, rather rather than stop the real because there's phony, let's just stop the phony Amen. and do the real. Amen. Yeah, not the phony. Come on, saints. Yes, absolutely. We got a responsibility. Yes. To stop it. Okay. So he says, I saw the folly in the prophets of Samaria. They prophesied in Baal. What? Here's why it bothers God. They caused my people Israel to err. Mm-hmm. Certainly. You want to be careful who you allow to prophesy to you. And, and here we get a good grade, but man, just be careful. Yes. I've seen the prophets, in verse 14, I've seen the prophets of yeah. Jerusalem, a horrible thing. They committed The prophets committed adultery. They walk in lies. They strengthen the hands of the evildoers. And none does return from his wickedness. They are all, all of them are, are as to me as Sodom and the inhabitants of Gomorrah. They are like Sodom and Gomorrah in God's house. Okay, let's turn to Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter 9, and, and we may be stopping here. Now, I'm, I'm just acknowledging to you that all I'm trying to do tonight, let me, uh, let me say, I, here's the way I like to say things. I believe that prophetic mysteries is that of interpretation. All we're doing is trying to interpret what God has been saying and doing through the body here, through different ones of you. God has been speaking, this is their corporate body. God has been speaking to us through multiple people. And all I'm trying to do as pastor, I believe that prophetic ministry is that a, a spiritual interpret, interpretation. We're trying to interpret what God is doing so we can come into alignment, we can be in obedience and go further with God. Yes. Who, who so would want to come to church for 60 years and never gain any ground? I mean, that, that's not wise, okay? Uh, we got a song lined up here, and uh, I, I may or may not preach Sunday morning. I, I'm going to speak Sunday morning, and tonight I'm just trying to, to do spiritual interpretation. Believe me, when I first started to study this, I thought I was going to get into uh, to the big boy stuff, but to me this is even bigger. This was God's thought, and I was quite surprised when I began to study this today. And I felt the Spirit of God wanted me to, to on this weeping this morning uh, that we, that our heart we become one heart, one mind with God. That God wants to do something. So when He prophesies to us that this baby has been birthed, when 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 a baby's birthed. That's going to take a lot of time and attention. Yes. A lot of care. Yes. Amen. Amen. A lot of time. Yes, a lot of attention. Lord. A lot of effort. Got to be really focused. And it, it, little bitty oh, baby's big God. birth may hinder your sleep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they don't know it's sleep. Yes. Yeah, a little bit late. 8 p.m. to 8 a.m. <laughs> well, Jeremiah chapter 9. And uh, I'm going to try to make this the last part. And then we'll open up for, to response to Afterglow. Jeremiah chapter 9, verse 1. Oh, that my head were waters, and my eyes a fountain of tears, that I might weep day and night for the slain of the daughter of my people. Yes. Oh, that I had a wilderness, a lodging place of wayfaring, that I might leave my people and go from them, for they're all adulterous, adulterous and assembly of treacherous men. You ever, you ever, you ever just want to go get along with God? Yes. Let me, so that you understand what I'm saying. Remember when Jesus said, "How long will I be with you?" Yes. <laughs> Come on, saying. That's why I say, "Come out from among them." And, and be a separate people. I'm pondering something here. I may, I may need to do one more thing. 
verse 3, and they bend their they bend their tongues like their bow for lies. They are not valiant for the truth. You know what you are? You are valiant for truth. Amen. Yes, yes Jesus. Yeah. Yes. And people who are not valiant for truth yeah. don't want to hang with you. For sure. Yes. And they want to make you feel like there's something wrong with you. In That's reality, true. there's something yes. right with you. Yes. Yes. And there's something wrong with them. Yes. 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 That's why we need to know God's work. Yes. Okay? Yes. Yes. okay, they're not valiant for the truth. Um, the word the word valiant in the Hebrew means that they're not strong, they're not mighty, they are not prevailing, they are not confirming truth. And the word truth there in the Hebrew means they're not faithful. Fidelity, it means trustworthiness, it means they're not firm, they're not honest. They're not valued for truth upon the earth, for they proceed from evil to evil. They do not know me, saith the Lord. I need to share one more thing. I feel like this is very important. In Isaiah chapter 64. And I forgot this, and I, this actually would be a better place to close than where I was going to. In Isaiah chapter 64, I'm not going to tell you what verse. Saints, read ahead and steal my thunder. When, when Pastor Jan and I first got married, my hometown area was so upon my heart. Some of you know about going down when we met at at the hotel. Well, many years before we met most of you, Pastor Jane and I went down, and there was another place south of Macon that we held two different crusades. And we went down there, and I shared this scripture. Yeah. Verse 10. Thy holy cities are wilderness. Zion is a wilderness. Jerusalem a desolation. And a man... I had played Little League, Midget League, Little League, um, American Legion, Colt League. I played baseball many years with a man's son. And I shared the scripture, and this man had come to the meeting, and he rebuked me out loud while I was preaching. Wow. He, he did. did not understand. I'm sharing scripture, and he's rebuking me. Wow. He did. And I just kind of chuckled and knew the man, yeah. you know. Uh, I didn't feel it was the devil. I just he was a, he was a member of what I would my reference is the professional religious system yeah. every day. Like didn't that understand spiritual, spiritual thing. Yeah. That's what I felt with. I didn't feel like it was the demon, you know, trying to control. When I yeah. uh, again see whenever you when you're never whenever you're trying to be truthful, how things really are. They're going people. They don't want to see it. They don't believe it. For sure. Mm -hmm. They don't believe it. They think everything, everything's fine and dandy. The holy cities are a wilderness. Zion is a wilderness. Jerusalem a desolation. Verse 11. Our holy and our beautiful house, where our fathers praised thee, is burned up with fire. Would you say that upon planet Earth, much, much of the church has been seduced? Yes. Mm -hmm. All right, now we're going to come in for landing. Verse 9. But we are always an unclean thing, and all of our righteousness are filthy legs. We, we do fade as a leaf, and our iniquities, like the wind, have taken us away. Verse 7. There is none that's calling upon your name. There is none that stirs up himself to take hold of thee. I have always remembered that scripture. There's none that stirs himself up. Remember what Paul said to Timothy? Stir up. They yes. get the God within you. Yes, so don't feel guilty that if you feel a little dry, a little empty, a little barren, you go through a hard season. Don't get down upon yourself. You have to stir up the gift. That's how. That's how you really learn how to maintain. There's going to be difficult days. That's true. Yes. Yes. Yeah. You know, that's not negative confession. That's the truth. That's, that's true. There, that's there's true. Some yes. days are yeah. just harder. It's just yes. uh, uphill. There's yes. adversity. So what God's saying, okay, there's none that's calling upon my name. There's none that's willing to stir up himself. Oh. And that's why when you go back to Ezra chapter 1 and verse 3, that call goes forth. Oh. Who among you is willing to leave Babylon? Oh. Take this journey. Yes. Being oh, cleansed and purged, prepared. Ezra prepared his heart to seek God. But if you seek him, yep. until... You'll find it. Oh. And that will change everything. It changed everything in Moses' life. 
Amen? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Go come in for landing. Go go in just a little bit. We're gonna put on, we'll do a little bit after go for those of you that got the time and energy to stay. <clears throat> There's none that stir up himself to take hold of thee. For thou hast hid thy face from us, and it consumed us because of our iniquities. He's confessing the sin, he's acknowledging. Okay. okay. But then he says in verse 8, but, but now, God, you are our Father. Amen. Yes. Yes, God. Yes. We are the clay, yeah. and you are the potter. Yes. We are the work of your hand. Your right hand. When I pastored out in the country, in the middle of nowhere, in the 80s, I was really... And so the round trees came and preached a three-day revival that changed my life. I said, God, I'm not going to go to the woods once a day anymore to spend an hour with you. I'm going to go to the woods three times a day until. Right. And I, I saw the importance of the river and the gifts. And the first real supernatural thing that ever happened, I saw like beautiful sky. And out of this beautiful sky, I, too, I saw two great big giant arms come down out of the sky with hands. And there was a vessel of clay upon the parker's wheel. And God's, it was God's hand, and he, he was saying basically this scripture. He's Father. We are the potter. We are the clay. And what is he do? All we need to do is allow God's hand yes, to shape us yes. and mold us into whom or what. He wants us yes. to be. Amen. Okay, so don't don't There's try to become like someone else. That's the rest. Don't try to be Kathleen Kuhlman or T.D. Jakes. Be yeah. who God has made Amen. you. Amen. If He wanted you to be T.D. Jakes, you'd be T.D. Jakes. <laughs> All true. we need to do is yield to Amen. God Amen. and That's and and understand what He's saying to us right now. So there's what's happening here oh. is that there's an anointing. He said, there's an anointing that no flesh would glory in his presence. Mm -hmm. We're being free of having to perform mm -hmm. and, impress, and impress one another. Yeah. There's an anointing of peace here. Yeah. We're coming to, there's no striving. Mm -hmm. oh. We can admit, mm -hmm. well, I didn't do it, but I, I, had to, I had to fight off the thoughts of that poor little parakeet. Mm -hmm. I didn't do it. I used to, but I don't. I learned how to resist the thoughts. Mm -hmm. We're free, not have to be perfect. Yes. But the not same time we're coming, we're getting in position. It was a prophetic word. Get in position yeah. and stay in position. Begin to contend. How long? Until. Until. Yes. I'll close there. I'll put on a song for those who believe. Mm -hmm.